What's Gucci everyone? It's AJ here again, and today I want to talk about clocks and lambdas and passing them in to other functions in Ruby. Now, what I'm going to show you guys quickly here is what a proc is. Now, a proc is a way to set up a functional object in Ruby. In Ruby, you want to think of everything as an object. Unlike Java, where there are things that are not, the language is not completely object oriented, Ruby is truly object oriented, is truly OO. And simply taking from the documentation on the website and giving them some credit here, I'm going to show you guys an example. So if I simply define a proc here as an object and I say new and then I pass it a block of n and then n times factor what I get here is let me see if I do a equal I get a proc object back so if I do a equals gen times and then give it five I can pr print out a here and as you can see I'm going to have a proc object back so with my proc object I have a functional object and what proc objects are essentially are blocks of code that have been bound to a set of variables. So it's like, you know, kind of bounding a block of code, a block, watch my video on Ruby blocks if you don't understand blocks, to a variable, which is pretty cool. And remember, it's always represented as an object. So since I have this block encapsulated in a variable, let's call it, let's call it with five. So what will this do? It's going to, I'm going to pass in five, which is, um, which is n factor and then it's going to give me 25 because simply I'm doing n I'm doing I called gen times giving it five got back that function and that defined factor here in my in my function and then I recalled and then I did a dot call and defined n which I passed in the brackets there and so it did five times five if I change this to seven I'd get dun -dun -dun -dun, 35 pretty nice I'll bring this up too so procs provide a way to easily store blocks of code within variables so you can dynamically update them or change your function based on choices and you can call them with the dot call method okay so now we're going to move on to lambdas which is a shorthand for making procs and so do, 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 do. Y and I forgot the brackets. I always like to put a space after brackets in Ruby. It's the notation I was reading online and I kind of like it too. So I like to put a space before the ending one and after the beginning one. So now I've called lambda right here. No differences between lambda and proc, but most of the time they do the same thing. And I'm going to illustrate those differences right now. So simply, let me say, let's say I have lambda and let's say I have proc right here I have or p and I'm going to do proc dot new and do the same thing as I just showed you so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call them and you can call them the same way so I'm going to do p dot call and we're going to give it one comma two and then I'm going to give it lamb dot call two comma uh, give it the same parameters one comma two and then I've got three and three and you notice here there's no difference. There's no decimal difference. They both did what I did. They called and print out the things. Let me try giving this the wrong number of parameters. So I'll give this one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So something very interesting happened there. Proc did not give me an error, but Lambda did. So Lambda will give me an error if the parameters are wrong or if the parameters go incorrectly. So Proc, it just simply discarded that extra parameter, that three, and printed out that three right there, as you can see. And then the last one, and then the lamb didn't print out. It gave me an error. It recognized wrong number of arguments. So that's one of the differences. The second difference is probably the biggest difference. Because, well, the the second difference is when is the return values. And I'm going to take this this code from the sample wiki code that I will have a link to in the description. It's the Wikipedia page for Ruby describing blocks and procs. Some people are very nice and post this stuff online. Thank you. Thank you guys. Okay, so now I'm doing something where I'm simply calling a proc. I'm calling a proc and I'm, I have a lambda function. 
I'm calling it, and then I have a proc function, and then I'm immediately calling it, and then I have a string at the end. And they're both wrapped in functions. And then right after, I'm calling each of the respective functions. So the whole point of this is that a proc returns from the enclosing method automatically. And so what that means is when proc is called here, it just simply, it, it stops everything. So it, it returns out of the all the enclosing function it's in. So it's so when return calls it, it's going to return BAM. Instead, I'll put puts BAM. I think it'll be easier to see. And it's never going to get to this. It's never going to get to this last part. It's going right here. It's going to pat. It's going to... um pack off the whole function and return from the whole function of try red pack. So when I run this, I got bam, and then do, 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 what did we do here? Oh, I did puts. Bam, this is not reached. So what is happening right now is that Why is this happening? Put spam, this is not reached. I believe what's happening here now is that when I change this to return instead of puts, obviously nothing in the function stopped. But what I meant to say is that when, when there's a return in the proc, that completely stops the function. So simply, if I change this to return bam, I get bam printed once, as you can see right here. And what that does is it returns bam, but once the proc returns, it returns from the enclosing, it returns from the enclosing function as well. So this whole function is done once I call it and I return it inside the proc. But in the lambda, you kind of get the behavior that you, I would like more. So if I get a lambda, um, calling it from the function won't just end it. So I'm going to comment. I'll just comment this part out. You comment with a hashtag. Kind of cool. They were doing it before Twitter was. I'm going to comment this out. So then, as you can see here, um, I have return bam here. So the lambda is going to return, but then I'm still going to get to this string. And in met Ruby methods, you return, you explicit, you, um, if you don't have a return statement, you automatically return the last thing that's there. So the lambda function won't return the outside won't return the outside function like the proc will mess with this a lot if you guys don't get it already so lambdas kind of have that conventional behavior with a, if you use a lambda within the function it will continue on okay so now quickly to end this tutorial if you guys have like let's just do array and let's do one let's do an array of kind of numbers or whatever so we'll do a dot dot z right and I'll do ray dot next undefined method next for a dot dot z. That's true because let me just do freaking a comma b right there. So let's say I have an array here and I want to iterate through it. And you can use a map function. What the map function does essentially is it um iterates through things. It um iterates through each a collection and it change and it looks at that collection and it, and it multiplies it in some way and you can manipulate it with the map function so a and b are going to go be put, put through the char right here and then i can simply do char times five or something like that and so let me put r here and the reason because r isn't changing when i put it out is i don't have a um is i don't have a exclamation mark which changes the variable indefinitely permanently so that does make a di big difference. But something I could also do is, let's say I did char dot upcase. So I want to upcase everything. And I gotta put my exclamation mark right here. So if I wanted to do that, I could do this. And I could do this, but there's another way to do that with proc. So something you can also do is I can also pass in a function, a, um, I can pass in a symbol to a proc. I can pass in the symbol of upcase and then run it and then I forgot the E, and then run it and still get the same results, which is kind of cool. But the whole point is here is why is this working? Why am I passing an ampersand in an upcase? Well, I'm passing the symbol, which is an object. An object is, you know, an, a symbol is an object. Everything is an object. A string is an object. Everything's important. And so upcase is a, a string, a symbol. And so the ampersand 
what it does is it calls to proc on it. And what a symbol has, and a lot of a lot of um, Ruby given objects have is to proc, which returns is which returns the symbol to the proc. So it's going to look up upcase for the type that it's being used on and convert that to a procedure to essentially use it. And so if I just if I run this function again, if I run this thing again, I get I'll change this just for you guys to change this to C. I'll get C and B. And so what Ruby is recognizing is, is I can pass it without the two proc or with the two proc. And what the map function is looking at, it's looking at if I'm passing in a block or not, which would be if I call two proc on it, it's already become a procedure for me. So I don't need to do anything for it. Ruby is checking that. Or if it does need to turn it into a procedure, the ampersand will do that too. So that's kind of just a double-edged sword there. So pretty cool. And so this beats out doing something like this every time. Like otherwise I'd have to do I, I dot upcase, right? I have to do that every single time. And that does the same functionality, but instead you can use symbol to proc it's called and simply pass in the symbol of the name of the method you want to call. And this only works with one method, which is pretty common. And the ampersand say, okay, convert this to a proc. And that's the whole point of where I was trying to get this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you watched the whole way through, Thank you. Please like. It helps me out a lot. And tell me how I can improve. I'm trying to improve to see my voice sounds better. Let me know if you think that's good.